Oh, hi. Um, oh, hi. Um, yeah, I, I just, I'm Christine, and I just had a question I was wondering if someone could help me with. Okay. Do you have sure. a minute? Okay. Well, um, I'd like to um, yeah. delve into the history of the organization, because I like learning about, like, smaller religions like that. Um, I, I used to be into reading about William Miller, and it, there's kind of a connection there, you know. Um, do you know about William Miller? Yeah. Oh, okay. Did did Russell actually teach that Jesus came invisibly in 1874? No, he actually was in, uh, came into power in 1914, Jesus did. Took over the kingdom. Yeah, I was asking what Russell taught about it, though. What I'm reading about, um, it says that he met this guy named Nelson Barber, who was actually involved with the William Miller group. You know, there was, some of them continued to set <laughs> new dates even after that happened. You know, do you know about that in 1844? Yeah. The, the great disappointment. But, um, yeah, so. Okay, so. Yeah, I'm just trying to confirm that. Going on to. Yeah. and going on to. Uh, JW.org. Yeah, yeah. It's not really possible. Yeah, I can't really find um, too much. Um, they only have their own publications through uh, 1950. Um, you know, to, to really study things, you need to look at the original sources, actually, and not just what someone says about it, you know. So that's what I was wondering. Um, right. I'm just checking that out with you. If Russell taught 1874, actually, and he taught 1914 for the end, not not invisibly, but you know, it, and what you know, what's so interesting about it? Um, that guy Nelson Barber, he had predicted 1874 um, with Adventists, you know, before that would be like the end with with all these things happening, and then after it didn't happen. Then they said it was invisible. So, you know, I was wondering, too, is that how Russell... Yeah, Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, on on the thinking, uh, most of them thought they were going to heaven, and when they first started studying together as a group... Then, yeah, he he taught that explicitly. It wasn't it wasn't that they just thought that. He taught that as as God's he called them God's dates, not ours, in his books. You know, studies in the scriptures. That's that's why they thought that because he right. Russell taught them that. Yeah. Do you think he it came from so God then? then? God's kingdom came into power in 1914. That, they realized that, and even then, in 1914, they thought they were going to going to go to heaven at that yeah. time. But he they was, realized when they didn't. How, how long did they? Uh, it take till they started saying that it happened invisibly, that something happened invisibly, because they weren't predicting an invisible event. They were predicting was, visible uh, apocalyptic events. And it also, he said it would be the end right. of Armageddon and the destruction of millions of Christendom. Yeah. So it was it was between 1914 and 1919 when they started realizing that there was a preaching work to do and to help people and things like that. So it, it took a while as they kept reading the scriptures and things like that, discussing it. I, I did notice so this then, one reference um, that Christ was present since 1874 um, in a book from 1929. When he came to the kingdom power in the heavens. No, that, that they were teaching still that Jesus came invisibly in 1874 in 1929. So you can see that in a book called um, Prophecy by Rutherford. So, right. See, so yeah. What, what is your I, I, what is your question there? Oh, I'm just trying so to confirm these. They felt. Yeah, I'm just trying to make yeah, sure this is. 1914. That's when they 
realized that he came into kingdom power by ousting Satan from the heavens, and then and all the demons. Oh no, they didn't realize it in 1914. Like, like I said, they're still teaching that those things happened in 1874, invisibly in 1929. Yeah. So no, they didn't realize that in 1914. Um, it was a huge embarrassment. No, it took them. Well, they made made corrections. Well, that's a nice way of putting it, but don't you don't want to learn what they? Yeah, I mean it's disturbing. I mean it seemed like he was just doing the same thing Nelson Barber did. He predicted all this stuff for 1914. None of it happened, and so he used the invisible thing, or they did later. I don't know if Russell was. I don't know. I'm not sure what he was saying. I think he was kind of using the invisible thing because he just yeah. said it was the end of the Gentile times, which then he changed the definition of that, I guess, to, that, you know, it didn't have anything to do with the beginning of a world war. That's not what he predicted. So to me, it just seems like they are using the yeah. same thing Nelson Barber did. Like, you can make all these predictions and then say, oh, oh, it's the right date, but we were just expecting the wrong thing. It seemed like he learned that from, from him. Okay, so... Yeah. So, w- what is your reason for doing this? Is it, is it to discredit the witnesses, or what is? Well, the, the the I read in one of their books. I think it was the Bible Teach book that origins of things are important because you might learn that it's like a dirty piece of candy. So I'm you know I'm just taking their advice. I mean, why is the origin of everything else important, like it holidays? Is. But the origin of the society is that important too? I mean, it's it's they're just they were just a false prophet, like a lot of Adventists that kept predicting dates. Yeah. So you're saying that Jehovah's Witnesses are just changing as after things happen a lot of times. Yeah, times after after things is, don't happen. Don't know what happened, yeah, what like nineteen twenty five too. Right. Yeah, I mean yeah. why why the why the say the the claim that they're God's only channel on earth, I mean, it's easy to look at the history. I mean they even said the preaching work would be completed at, in this century. They said that in the nineteen hundreds. So that that wasn't true either. It didn't happen exactly. It didn't but happen you at all. Look at the, the fruitage. Yeah, you look at the fruitage. The, um, I am looking at the fruitage now. I am looking at the fruitage. Like the you know, they told people not to have children in the 30s and 40s, and they sometimes even even beyond that time they would tell people that. They told people in 1969, yeah. "You'll never grow up to fulfill any career in this system," because they were predicting 1975. Sounds like you've done your history pretty well, but you still look at the fruitage of. Um, that is the fruitage. God's organization. It's very damaging well, to people's lives. Today is part of, well, no, not necessarily. So if you're looking to discredit it, um, that's your choice. But well, why would anybody like see all those things and think it's God's channel on earth? You know. I mean, did you ever read Deuteronomy 18, 20 through 22? Either fruitage, that's what you get. What? We don't get involved in wars. We don't get involved in wars. The, his, uh, Jehovah's Organization has talked the same thing earthwide. There's no, um, I mean, there's mistakes. We're imperfect people. Well, you, you call it that, but other people against. call it false false prophecy. Because they also said... It, they say these things in the name of Jehovah, like saying it, it's God's dates, not ours. And um, well, like the thing they used to have in the Awake magazine, it said the Creator's promise that those who saw the events of 1914 would not pass away till the till the new paradise comes. But then they had to change the words. I mean, can, is it good to say things like yeah, that in the did. name of God? Refinement that's, and that's a refinement. Yeah. See, they use all these like words so that you won't really think about it. Like, oh, no problem. Like, just a little mistake, a little refinement. 
It's not refinements. It's you, you can't go around saying you're speaking for God. It's, it warns about that in, in Deuteronomy 18, 20 through 22. Did you ever see those verses? Okay. So, yes. Okay, you did? Here, here's, what do they here's, say? You want... No. I, I no. read them. I don't remember exactly what they Oh, yeah. Say. Well, check it out. Check it out. Here's the problem. Okay. It sounds like you're you're trying to discredit Jehovah's organization. So if you want to do that, you can you can do what you want, but I'm not going to sit here and discuss this, okay? Well, it's so important. If you're just because if you want to obey Jehovah, he if says... you're looking for him... I, well, it's... What I, hello? Hello, King of Hi. Um, is this Jehovah's Witnesses? Yes. Oh, oh, good. Um, I just had a question I was wondering if someone could help me with. Uh, potentially so. What, what's your question? I might be able to help. Okay, thanks. Um, well, um, sometimes I'm interested in learning about um, smaller religions like Jehovah's Witnesses. And um, mm-hmm. I, a couple of years ago, I'd read uh, some books about William Miller. You know about the Great Disappointment of 1844? Um, not much, but oh, okay, slightly, but... Yeah, it, uh, it's considered by some kind of an offshoot of the great of William Miller and then other people who continued uh-huh. the date setting and things like that. And um, uh-huh. I, I was reading on this other website um, about a more detailed account of the history. I mean, is it true uh-huh. that Russell taught uh, Jesus came in 1874? Uh, no. So... No, so um, what we believe was when the Mediterranean would have been in 1914. Oh, no, I'm, I'm asking about historically, not now, but did Russell teach? Oh, he seemed to. I, there's that, a lot of, I would, that I would not know of, but I would have to do some research to check on that. Yeah, yeah I'm seeing... Because, like, the Bible um, students were founded, actually, the Bible students were founded later than that in the 1880s, I believe, which is what nowadays are called Jehovah's Witnesses, but... But, right, yeah. right, but that's what they yeah. taught. They taught the end had come, or or that Jesus had come invisibly in 1874, and that whole invisibility thing is like really interesting how that came about too. Because he he had this friend Nelson Barber who was involved with people that predicting apocalyptic events for 1874, and then when it didn't happen, they just said it was the right day, but they were they were teaching the wrong things about it and it was invisible so uh-huh. um it's it's just kind of interesting how um the society also used that after 19, their failed you know 1914 mm-hmm. they just mm-hmm. later reinterpreted it as invisible so may, i wonder if they learned doing that from nelson barber but um yeah he seemed to be having uh taught that jesus came in 1874 um all his life okay well, here, we're, we're about to have a meeting here. Would oh, you be okay. able to leave me perhaps your name and contact information, and I can have somebody try to get back to you? Um, there... Well, I, I just wanted to know what you guys thought about it. I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's uh-huh. uh, you know, it's important to consider the origins of things. Mm-hmm. And right, I, I right. can't really find a really thorough history on JW.org. Um, and it's good to look at well, original sources. Well, that would be before sources. the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses or previously Bible students existed. So, yeah, I wouldn't really... No, 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 I was saying he was... No, they did teach that. They actually taught that as late as 1929. They were still teaching that Jesus came invisibly in 1874. And that doesn't seem... I mean, the... I think you might want to check your resources for that part. I'm using the original sources, um, books like... Um, one book where they taught that Jesus uh, came invisibly in 1874 was um, called Prophecy by um, Judge Rutherford. Um, okay. So that's they were still teaching that. So mm-hmm. didn't they even? Then they have all these videos that say they saw the signs and were the only ones that understood them correctly in 1914. Well, they were still saying mm-hmm. Jesus came invisibly in 1874. So I don't know how they could have seen the signs if they, uh, you know, you, you see what I'm saying? It yeah. doesn't really. It kind of okay. Well, here, well, could you leave your name and contact information so we can have somebody call you back? Well, I, I like talking to you. If you if you want to call me back. 
Um, it probably would be a, a, a sister that would call you back. Oh, I see. Uh, well, um, the yeah. sources are I was using was um, Studies in the Scriptures books, and mm-hmm. that book Prophecy by Rutherford has that, that they were still teaching uh-huh. 1874, and um, uh-huh. this, a site called jwfacts.com. So okay. Maybe you can check it out. All right. Well, okay. thank you. Have thanks, a great rest of your day. Thanks for talking. Bye. Bye.